Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back in with another sequence video. Uh, this one is in Joshua 10. This chapter is well known because it has a verse in it that um, tells us how the sun and the moon are moving, you know, and then Joshua was able to make it um, stand still, you know, with God's help. And, um, you know, this is an incredible chapter because it also has a sequence of the end times. And, um, you know, I'll go through that. And then it also ties into other parts of the Bible, which um, is just incredible, you know, every time I come across this. So there's a little bit of play on words as well at the beginning. Joshua 10 verse 1, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king. So that's an actual name of a person. And uh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but we see what's going on currently with AI, artificial intelligence. So um, I just thought that was interesting because that's the lead up to um, salvation. Um, Joshua 10 verse 2, he feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than AI and all its men were warriors. And so that in modern day, that would represent America and, you know, all of its uh, technological influence worldwide and stuff. But anyway, that's the foundation for Christ's second coming <clears throat> and where the salvation event will be headquartered, you know, and focused in is America, modern day Egypt. Okay, so now we're going to get references to salvation, which is incredible. Verse 4, again, this is a number that's not always, of course, but referencing the elect is 4, 14, 7, 144, and, um, you know, that type of thing. So we see that again here. This is in Joshua 10, verse 4. Yeah, that's good. That's 14. <clears throat> Come up to me and help me. Come up to me and help me and let us strike Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the people of Israel. So... This is salvation. And then God's elect are going to be taken away and they're going to literally aid him, help him when he returns. And then we'll get that here in all my sequence videos. And then they're going to return, you know, and fight against um, God's left-hand side. You know, the rest of God's left-hand side after America is destroyed. Verse 6, And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal, saying, Do not relax your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the hill country are against us. So Joshua went up. And that's in verse 7. Okay. So um, that's salvation. Okay. Next, in verse 10, and the Lord threw them into a panic. And so now this is the time of the Great Tribulation. And Second Ezra is a great book to, you know, get more details into how that's going to look. And then if we move down, after that, it says, um, the Lord threw down large, large hailstones from heaven. Okay, and then that's consistent with Revelation 16, 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven and every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail and for the, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. And so God's been doing the same thing. This is the amazing thing about the God of the Bible is that if these things actually happen, if this chapter actually occurred in human history, then first and foremost, the sun and the moon were stopped in their circuit for a full day and it will never happen again. And so that's an incredible miracle that God did to uh, protect his people and to fight for them. And so that proves that the earth is flying stationary. And then if this event also happened, then God's going to, quote, fight and destroy in the same way that he did here in Joshua 10 in the last days. Okay, and then we see that uh, consistency. It's incredible. So um, verse 12, at that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Stand still, sun, stand still at Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nations took vengeance on their enemies. And so these are all references now to uh, God and his elect returning to destroy, you know, God's left hand side. And so you get that explicitly here in verse 15. So Joshua returned and all Israel with him. And so this is again, Christ returning with his elect. And so that fulfills these verses. Um, I mean, there's many, many verses to support this. Really, all my sequence videos prove this. But 1 Thessalonians 3.13, To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all of his saints. Okay, so, and that's in 33, 3.13. So that's a, a new power structure. This is a translation of kingdoms that's happening at this point where, um, you know, the leadership on earth is going to be destroyed. And then that's what we uh, read again here. Uh, these five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave. So this is where they're they're scared, you know, and, and all that <clears throat> uh, about what's about to happen uh, in the cave at uh, Makkada. So this is now the battle is shifted to the Middle East. OK, this is the quote, Battle of Armageddon. 
And it was told to Joshua, the five kings have been found hidden in the cave at uh, Makeda. And Joshua said, roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. So in these days, it's a, it's a, a ground battle. Okay, in the last days, it's going to be in the sky. And these quote unquote rocks, they look like massive rocks in the sky are these so-called ufos these chariots okay and so that's the way it's going to be in the last days it's going to be a, a battle in the sky it's not even a fair fight um <clears throat> but do not stay there yourselves pursue your enemies attack their rear guard do not let them enter their cities for the lord god has given them into your hand and so this is again returning with his elect when joshua and the sons of israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out and when the remnant that remained of them had entered into the fortified city. So now if you read 2nd Ezra as well, while God is doing all this killing with his elect, there's a group that gathers together that's peaceable. Okay. And that's the remnant. And so it's language, it's exactly the same here. In 2nd uh, Ezra 13, and this group is called the remnant. Okay, and so they're in a land that is in a distant land, you know, that um, no man has ever lived. Um, Second Ezra 13, 39. And as for your seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable. These are the 10 tribes which are led away from their own land in captivity in the days of King Hoshea, whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyrians, led captive. He took them across the river and they were taken into another land. Okay. And so that river, that river Euphrates is going to be dried up for them to make that journey back in the last days. <clears throat> and you can also read that in Revelation 16. Um, you know, I'll get that while I have it here. Um, <clears throat> Revelation 16, 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay. And so that's for them to make this journey back. Okay. Uh, but they formed this plan for themselves that they would leave the multitude of the nations and go to a more distant region where mankind had never lived, that there at least they might keep their statutes they had not kept in their own land. And they went in by the narrow passages of the Euphrates River for the most high performed signs for them and stopped the channels of the river until they had passed over. So he's going to do that again in the last days. Through that region, there was a long way to go, a journey, a year and a half of that country is called Arzareth. Then they dwelt there until the last times until the, in the days that we live in now, and now when they are about to come again. Okay, and that's um, enabled by Revelation 16. The Most High will stop the channels of the river again so that they may be able to pass over there. You saw the multitude gather together in peace. <clears throat> but, those, <clears throat> but those who are left of your people who are found within my holy border shall be saved. Therefore, when he destroys the multitude of nations that are gathered together, he will defend them who remain. That's the remnant. Okay, and so... This language here is consistent with what is going to happen in the last days. And so when Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out. Okay. And when the remnant that remain of them had entered into the fortified cities. And so uh, that's, uh, that's incredible. And so now we're going to get reference to the kingdom. Then all the people returned safe to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. Not a man moved his tongue against any of the people of Israel. Okay. So now Israel's back in their righteous rulership, okay? And you can't speak out against them, okay? You can't, I don't think there's a God, and you know, I think God made a ball of earth, and you, I think Christ is white, yada, yada, yada. You can't make up stuff anymore. Listen to this, not a man moved his tongue against any of the people of Israel, okay? You shut up, you know, and you serve them, and then they serve God, okay, of course. And so, <clears throat> verse 43, then Joshua returned and all Israel with him. And so... That's a sequence of the end times. Okay, it's absolutely amazing. And it lines up with 2nd Ezra 13, of course, Revelation 16, 1 Thessalonians, everything. It's amazing. So Joshua 10 not only supports a flat stationary earth, but also reaffirms the sequence. And so, so to me, any scripture um, is likely canonical if it has the, uh, you know, supports the structure, the flat stationary earth, and then supports the fact that, uh, you know, this is the sequence of the end times. And so then there's something to that. Okay, may not be physically in a Bible, but that's... That's true then. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.